So I posted this on Instagram yesterday. I said, what is your single biggest challenge to acquiring new listings? And as I look through this, overwhelmingly, most of you said, well, it's staying consistent, setting appointments consistently, consistency, motivation, lack of confidence. Most of this was all due to uh, mindset, making the calls. Um, a lot of this is just being consistent, limiting beliefs, consistency. And so what I'm going to do in, uh, in today's episode is I'm going to spend a ton of time on really, really unpacking if this whole thing around consistency is truly the thing that is holding most of you back from from essentially uh, going from where you are right now to living the life that you want, there is a simple fix for this, all right? And so I uh, always wanna ask myself this question that I'm gonna share with you guys today. And that question is this, how is it that the one percenters are so consistent while 99% of the rest of the real estate agents are simply not? In other words, I asked all of you, uh, on YouTube and on Instagram, a couple hundred thousand real estate agents, and the vast majority are saying, well, I'm just not consistent. Well, how is it then that the people that are winning at the highest level, when they are asked, what is it that contribute to your success? They always say consistency. So we know the root cause of success and failure is the same thing, this consistency word. Well, why? What is it? So I want to introduce you guys to something that I call the Consistency Manifesto. These are things that I've been working on for the past decade, and they are 10 concepts that will absolutely change the way in which you produce. This will help you to be a lot more productive and a lot more consistent with your behavior than maybe you are right now. This is how we will... Uh, trick your brain into doing hard, difficult things that right now you just aren't consistent in doing, or maybe you're avoiding. So let's start with concept number one. Concept number one is um, to be your future self now. Well, what does that actually mean? So Dr. Ben Hardy, his entire work is around this concept. He's got a great book called Be Your Future Self Now. And the big idea is this. The big idea is to formulate what type of person you want to be in the future and get very, very clear on that person, what that person looks like, how that person feels, the amount of money they make, uh, where they live, what they drive, uh, the relationships they have in their business, what their business looks like, what type of relationships they have in life in, in general. Uh, and we get really clear on creating what I call your new character or your version 2.0. And then once we're really clear on that, which is simple to do, we say, how would that actually, how would that person behave? What type of things would they do? What type of character traits do they have? Well, this person is probably pretty damn disciplined. They probably have a lot of focus. They probably have a lot of energy. They probably work out all the time. Uh, and you start to really dial in their character traits. And then it becomes clear to adopt those behaviors today because it's actions before outcomes. It's be to have. It's become the type of person so that you can do what you need to do to have what it is that you want to have. That is what concept one is all about. Concept number two is what we call identity formation. These all play on top of each other. So when we look at the results that we all want, and in this case, and in this video, the results that we're after is more clients, more money, more listings, more time, more freedom, more savings. These are all results. This is what everybody's focused on is results. Well, at the same time, most of us have a lack of the results. Most of us are not where we want to be. Well, why is that? Well, that's because we don't take the actions necessary to get the result. Well, why is that? That's because most of us have an uh, 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 an outwardly approach, an outside in approach. We say we want the result. We focus all of our attention on these are the results that I want. I'm not getting those results. What is wrong? Where the top uh, 1% in our industry have an inside out approach. 
They say the goal, my friend, is not to say, okay, I got to make these damn calls today. I don't want to make these calls today. How am I going to make these 25 calls today? I've got to set an appointment today. This is all uh, how the 99% live. How the 1% live is an inside-out approach. They, The game is, the goal is to focus on a set of character traits that lead them to do the actions necessary to get the results thereafter. That's what, what I mean by an inside-out approach. So rather than you come into uh, your office and say, damn, I don't want to make these calls today. There's that old, inconsistent mindset. You say to yourself, I'm going to have an inside-out approach, meaning I'm not going to focus on 25 calls. I'm going to focus on discipline. I'm going to focus on focus. I'm going to focus on saying no. I'm going to focus on being my future self now. Okay, well, now that I'm uh, behaving like a dis disciplined person, what does a disciplined person do? What are the actions a disciplined person does? Well, they sit down and they block their time and they do the hard, boring work first every day. So that's inside out. So the actions are a result of focusing on the on the uh, on the character traits, and as we do the actions, the results take care of themselves. That's the difference in concept two of identity formation. Is that on a daily basis, you're focused on the character traits, you're focused on becoming your future self now, so that you can do what you need to do to get the results that you want. Let's talk about concept number three. I call this the focus audit. It has two parts to it. This is something that I often will have coaching clients do. So Warren Buffett is famous for this concept that he talks about, which is addition by subtraction. So what he will do oftentimes with his high-level uh, executives is to say, okay, the result you want is X. What are the things that you're doing that uh, will drive the result that you're after? And oftentimes, the executive will come to the meeting with the laundry list of items, 20, 30, 40, 50 things. These are all the business initiatives, Warren, that uh, my team and I are working on to produce this, this result. And what Warren is famous for doing is to say to his executives, well, if you've got the 25 things on your list, here's what I want you to do. I want you to eliminate 20 of them such that you're left with the five things that would move the needle the most that have a direct impact on the outcome. And when we look at a real estate agent's business, we see this all the time. If the goal is to produce two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten 10 listings per month, and we look at all the things you do in a particular month, there are there is a lot of fat that could be trimmed. There is a lot of things that don't lead to the actual result or outcome that we want that we need to eliminate. And so this is how we move forward. This is how we do more by doing less. Why? Because we only have enough bandwidth. We only have a certain amount of finite energy, attention, and focus. And so if that's spread between 25, 30 different things that don't lead us to the result, we have to cut out all the fluff and sit down and audit. Okay, here are all the things I'm doing right now. Let me go through each one of those one by one and which of these have a direct correlation to the goal that I have. 10 listings a month, five listings a month, two listings a month. And you'll quickly see, don't need that. Okay, don't need dancing TikTok videos. That does not help me get listing appointment. All right, cut that out. Uh, don't need to spend all the time uh, at our, uh, uh, maybe our monthly chamber event. That doesn't lead me to getting a listing. You're gonna have all these things that you do that we need to eliminate so that you can uh, have a few, not a ton, of, of really mission-critical tasks that must be done on a daily basis to get us the result we want, okay? So that's that's the focus audit, which, us, which leads us to concept number four, which is to just say no. So as we're doing the focus audit, this next concept has everything to do with you having the courage to say no to the people and the things that are not serving you. 
And many of us overcommit ourselves, most of us overcommit our time, and most of us overcommit our money to things that don't help us to accomplish the goal that we have. And if even if that goal is to help other people, overcommitting to things that are not necessary or overcommitting because we want to be people pleasers and, and saying yes because you just can't simply tell people no, oftentimes has us spread too thin and not enough time to work on the things that actually matter. So when we're looking at being more consistent, what are the things you're saying yes to right now? What are the things you're committing to right now that simply are not making an impact on the goals that you have? Next, concept number five. Concept number five is to burn clean fuel. What does that actually mean? Well, uh, garbage in, garbage out. If we don't, if we don't have a daily habit of clean diet, exercise, you are going to burn uh, what I would say bad fuel. You won't have a lot of energy. You won't have a lot of focus. You won't have a lot of willpower. You won't have any of those things because you're burning bad fuel. So when we when I say burn clean fuel, what I mean by that is going to, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to say these things and you guys are going to say, wow, what's this have to do with listing property and selling real estate? And I would tell you everything. So burning clean fuel means that you go to bed at the same time every single day, that you limit the amount of uh, alcohol consumption. I've cut it out of my life 100%. That you wake up at the same time every single day. That you exercise and elevate your heart rate on a uh, every single day. That you take a cold shower every single day. That you take time to uh, work on your mental state and your mental health and your mental toughness. That's what I mean by burning clean fuel so that you can produce at the level that I think that you want to produce. Garbage in, garbage out. So we have to change the input. The input is what we put in our body, what we put into our mind, and how we treat our bodies. That's what I mean in concept number five. Concept number six, the Pomodoro technique. So when we look at being as productive as possible, as being consistent as possible, this is a really, really good strategy that you can use starting today. How it works is this. So if we look at the concept of, let's just say you have a, a tough time uh, prospecting every day. This is the thing that you avoid, that you're not consistent in, that you know you should be doing every single day, but you lack the consistency. Well, here's what we can do. Rather than saying, oh my God, I've got this huge, uh, I've got this huge goal. I've got to talk to 30 people today and I'm just avoiding it. Okay, let's break this down into uh, our blocks. And what happens is if we break that one hour block up into two pieces, it's 45 minutes of timed deep work where you know you're going to get a break in 45 minutes. This allows the brain to stay focused when the brain knows there is, there's a break to be had in a certain amount of time. So what I have a lot of my coaching clients do is actually buy a timer and sit their rear end at a desk set the timer for 45 minutes, and we are doing nothing but our deepest work. And in this case, we're talking about lead generation, proactive lead generation, picking up the phone and having conversations with people every single day. And we could do four of these sessions per day. And because we know, our minds know that we have a break coming up, this allows us to say, okay, I only have 42 minutes left. I only have 30 minutes left. I only have 20 minutes left. This allows you to stay focused because then you can have a moment of weakness when you have a break and say, I could be distracted in 27 minutes from now. This really helps, which leads me right into concept number seven, the impulse journey uh, journal. So the impulse journal should be used during your sprints. The sprints is what we just outlined with the Pomodoro uh, technique. So if we have a 60 minute slot of time, we break that time up into 50, 45 minutes of deep work, followed by a 15 minute uh, period of rest and recovery. During the 45 minutes, you want to have what I call the impulse journal. This is a simple, you can have a piece of paper, uh, it could be in a, in a notepad, and all the impulses that you have during your deep work, write them down, get them out of your head 
which will help you to stay focused, be disciplined to, versus fighting the urge to stop doing what you're doing to go do the other thing. It's like, oh my gosh, I forgot to call Nancy. You stop doing the deep work to go call Nancy. No, nope. we write it in the journal. Get it out of your head. Oh man, I want to uh, I got to get back to Bob on Facebook. All right, write it down. I want to go check my Instagram to see how many likes I got on my last post. Write it down. I want to go check TikTok. That new girl just put on the new dance video. Okay, write it down. The Impulse Journey uh, Journal is designed to keep you on task and give you the benefit of, of uh, getting the impulse out of your mind without acting on it. It's very, very powerful. And then you can, during your time, uh, your 15 minute breaks, you could go and be distracted with all the things you wrote down in your journal. All right, now let's talk about concept number eight. So concept number eight is done is better than perfect. Now we all know that perfection is simply what? Procrastination in disguise, my friends. This is probably the number one thing that I see when I start, uh, when I first start coaching an agent, is they get so caught up in wanting everything to be perfect that they get nothing actually done. You see, the learning is actually in the doing. The learning isn't in preparation. It's let me let you on a little secret. It is never going to be perfect ever. Uh, I tell this story all the time. I had my uh, my resume, which is now my pre-listing packet. Uh, for years with a misspelled word on it. And I don't know if it was just my clients missing it, them not saying anything, or them feeling bad that I couldn't spell. Uh, but I had it on there for, I don't know, two or three years before someone even said something to me. And at the same time, listing 80, 90, 100 homes per year with a pre-listing packet that was not perfect. Not only was it not perfect, it had literally typos on it. And so the point is, I'm not saying to be sloppy. What I'm saying is done is better than perfect. So making 25 phone calls uh, is better than you know not making any calls because you don't feel like you know the script verbatim and it's not perfect. That is better because the learning is in the doing. All right, let's talk about concept number nine. Concept number nine is the Jerry Seinfeld system. This is a great productivity hack. I would call this a consistency hack. So if you don't know uh, what this system is, it's super powerful. So you all know the, community, uh, the comedian Jerry Seinfeld. As he was growing his career, he said, I'm going to write down one joke per day so I can build my archives of content. Now, like most of you, Jerry was very inconsistent with that. Some days he would do it, some days he wouldn't do it. He was super inconsistent. And so what he came up with, which I think is absolutely genius, is this uh, process that he said to them himself, okay, every time I write down a new joke that I add to my archive, I'm going to take this calendar, uh, this physical calendar, and I'm going to mark a large red X on that calendar for every day that I do this. And what ended up happening, and a lot of uh, psychologists have, have done research around this, Jerry, it became too painful for Jerry to break the chain of his red X's that he'd mark off than it was to sit down and just do the hard work. In other words, it was harder for him not to do the work than it was to do the work because he had such a chain of consistency and the, and the, mere, the, the, the thought of breaking that consistency became more painful than it was to do the thing that he was looking to avoid. So we do this all the time with agents that we coach. We say, uh, uh, have a prospecting calendar in front of you. And every day that you hit your contact goal, give yourself a large red X, and then don't break the chain. And you'll find, just like Jerry found, just like many other humans find uh, in a lot of these research um, uh, projects, is that you start to gamify this. You start to say, man, I just love the feeling I get from the consistency I have with this little system is so powerful for my, for my confidence because confidence comes from what? Confidence comes through following through on your commitments you make to yourself. So the confidence I have through this system, you start to say, wow, look at how many X's I have in a row and you don't want to break the chain. It's super powerful. 
All right, let's talk about concept number 10, Parkinson's Law. So you all have heard of Parkinson's Law, which is that work expands to fill the time allotted. You've all heard that before. Well, what does that actually mean and how do we apply that in real estate sales? So here's the issue. Most agents that I talk to walk, uh, walk around uh, feeling as though they have to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because they always have this sense of like guilt that um, I'm, I'm not disciplined. I don't follow a schedule. So therefore, I feel like I always have to be on, always be by my phone, always uh, be working. Well, if we look at the, let's just say the, uh, the process of prospecting, most agents feel guilty because it's like, oh, another day has gone by where I didn't do what it was that I said I would do. I said to myself, okay, this is the week. I'm going to have 20 contacts per day, 100 contacts per week, because that's what my business says, uh, my business plan says I have to do. Well, they walk around all day saying, well, I was distracted this morning. I'll do it this afternoon. And then this afternoon comes and it's like, oh, I got caught up with this and I'll just make it up tomorrow morning. And they live this cycle and they, like, as you know, never get to the point of consistency. Well, what Parkinson's law teaches us is that rather than saying, okay, I've got all day to have these 20 contacts, is to invert that, is to actually limit the amount of time you give yourself for lead generation to say, rather than saying, I have 8, 10, 12 hours to do this thing, we say, we only have two hours to do this thing. And I cannot, and I will not, and I won't uh, prospect outside of that time. It's amazing what people can do with a limited amount of time. You don't believe me? Look at somebody the day before vacation. Look at yourself. Why is it that we behave in a certain way that we're so damn productive the day before you leave on vacation? It's amazing what you get done. You clean the house, you do the dishes, you get your car done, you, you get the kids' uh, teeth clean, you, you do all the laundry, you pack, you, you do so many things that were sitting on the to-do list for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks that you're able to get in one day when you limit the time. That is what we can do to be more productive. So I'm curious, as you guys leave this video today, which of these concepts do you resonate with the most? Which of them do you think will have the biggest impact? Because what we know is this, that your results live in your ability to be consistent in what it is that you're doing every single day.